In today's video, we will be examining the three speed gear hub, specifically the Sturmey Archer unit. Sturmey Archer three speeds have been in continuous production since 1902. There have been refinements and improvements, but the basic design remains unchanged. Here we'll be looking at planetary gear train basics. We'll be examining how the power flow works through the hub gear. And finally, we'll be looking at an actual hub gear and showing you how it works. Now let's take a look at the elements of a planetary gear train. We start with the sun gear. Here we see the sun gear mounted on a Sturmey Archer axle. The planetary gears, which are mounted in a carrier or a cage, seen here. And the ring gear. shown here. Now let's take a look at how the power flow works. The power flow requires an input and an output and a reactionary or fixed. In the Sturmey Archer hub the reactionary gear is always the sun gear. As it is affixed to the axle it is the only non-moving part in the hub. When the input is the ring gear and the output is the planetary carrier and the reactionary is the sun gear, the result is a gear reduction or underdrive. When the input is the planet carrier and the output is the ring gear and the fixed is the sun gear, the result is overdrive. Okay, now it's time to dive in this hub and show you how it works. Okay, the hub we'll be exploring is a classic AW Sturmey Archer 3-speed. This one is, it's actually a, a new old stock hub. Never been built into a wheel. Uh, build date on this hub is 1956, June of 1956. So it's 57 years old, but it's a brand new hub. This is the part a lot of mechanics have trouble with, is getting that snap ring off of there. I used it too until I practiced a bunch. Now, this is the point where if this hub had ever been in a wheel and used, unscrewing that ball ring uh, with the bare hub not being built into a wheel would be uh, quite a problem because the torque transmitted to the ball ring tightens that the ball ring into the hub shell every time you climb a hill or pedal hard. But I'm expecting that, because this one's never been built into a wheel, it's probably going to uh, come quite easily. Maybe not that easily. Yep, there it goes. It's just finger tight. Now, just a quick word here on disassembling these hubs, particularly the older ones. The ball ring thread is what they call a double start thread. In other words, it's a it's a twin thread. So there's a, a thread start on this side and a thread start on this side. Now I have seen uh, it written <laughs> that when you're disassembling these things that you should watch where the thread releases, where it lets go, and mark that spot so that it goes back the same way. I've never worried too much about it and frankly I've never had much of a problem. Okay, we'll begin with the bare bones, starting with the bare axle, and we'll build this thing up, and along the way I'll describe uh, the functioning in a way that I hope you'll be able to follow along. Okay, so here we have the sun gear, which as we've noted before is affixed to the axle. That is always our fixed or reactionary gear. 
Here we have the planetary carrier or cage which meshes with the sun gear and when it rotates about the sun gear the planetary gears will rotate. So in the first part of the video we looked at the uh, power flow through a basic planetary gear train. So now we'll look at the way that uh, Sturmy Archer is designed to actually engage and change the, uh, the power flow route through the axle in order to achieve three output ratios. So first we'll take a look at the main parts of the hub. First we have the driver. Now this is the means by which the power is transmitted into the hub. The uh, sprocket or cog is actually uh, mounted on the driver and as the the pedals are turned and the chain pulls this cog and rotates it, it rotates the driver and transmits the power into the hub. From there the power is transmitted to the clutch. All right, now if you see these uh, prongs, four prongs on the driver, they actually meet with the clutch. And transmit the power to the clutch. And the driver is in engagement with the clutch in all three gears. And when we change gears, what we're doing is we're changing the position of the clutch within the hub. So, just a quick rundown here. In first gear, what happens is the clutch is pulled all the way back to this position. In second gear, it's uh, in this position. And in third gear, it's in this position. Now, a little bit about what's happening in each of those three positions. In the first two positions, the clutch is actually driving the ring gear. So the power flow goes from the ring gear to the planetary. All right, now remember we said that when the input is the ring gear and the output is the planetary, and the reaction area is the sun gear, what we have is a gear reduction or underdrive. So, another thing that's going on inside here when we're in first gear, remember we said in first gear the clutch is fully retracted. Now the ring gear has drive pawls that transmit power to the hub. by means of the ball ring that screws into the hub. Okay, Note the threads on the ball ring that screws into the hub. And when the ring gear is driving the ball ring, it transmits the power to the hub from the ring gear. Now, these pawls actually extend inside the ring gear. And what happens in first gear when that clutch is in the fully retracted position, oh, we just dropped the pin out of there, no worries. In the fully retracted position, those poles are retracted so they do not transmit power to the, uh, to the ball ring. Turn this up the other way, the way I should have had it in the first place, so you can see the poles better and then the pins don't fall out. <laughs> anyway, spring-loaded poles. As you can see the inside, this is where the clutch in the fully retracted position retracts these poles so they do not drive the ball ring. So what's happening when we've got the shifter in the first gear position and the uh, ring gear poles are retracted, all right, so the driver drives the clutch which drives the ring gear and the ring gear drives the planet carrier at a reduced speed 
And since the pawls on the ring gear are retracted and not driving the ball ring, it's the pawls on the planet carrier that engage with the ratchets in the hub shell. So what we have then is an underdrive or a gear reduction for first gear. Now when we shift to second gear, the clutch moves to the middle position. It's still engaged with the ring gear, but now the poles have actually been released so that they uh, will drive the, the ball ring. So as the driver drives the ring gear, the ring gear drives the ball ring. So we now have a direct one-to-one -one ratio um, so that one revolution of input results in one revolution of output, which is a direct ratio, and that's our second gear. And in the meantime, these poles here are simply outrun by the hub shell. Okay, so you'll, you'll hear a very faint ticking as you're pedaling as the hub shell is actually rotating faster than the planet carrier and outrunning these poles. So you'll get a, a very faint tick, 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 tick as you're pedaling and the hub shell outruns these poles. Okay, now we'll take a look at what happens in third gear. In third gear, the clutch has uh, been fully advanced to the point where it now engages the pins on the planetary. So the power is actually transmitted directly from the input. The pong's fit over there. Okay, so the input is actually driving the planet carrier. And what happens then is that now because the uh, ring gear uh, rotates at a faster rate than the planet carrier due to the planetary gears. Okay, so now we have the driver directly driving the planet carrier, which is overdriving the ring gear. The ring gear poles are engaged to the ball ring, and they are transmitting an overdrive gear increase ratio to the hub shell. So now you have third gear and uh, that's, that is an overdrive gear. Again, these uh, poles here are just now going along for the ride because the hub shell is rotating at a faster rate than the planet carrier. It's simply outrunning these poles. We don't have to retract them. It will just simply ratchet over them. Okay, now just so I can get my big clumsy fingers out of the way here and uh, show you maybe a little bit more clearly, I've attached a shifter and uh, we'll run through this again how this works. So, in the first gear position, as we said before, the clutch is fully retracted. It is now driving the ring gear with the poles retracted. The ring gear is driving the planet cage at a reduced speed. And the output is the planet carrier driving the hub shell by means of these poles at a reduced speed for first gear. All right, so when we shift to the second gear position, all right, we see that the clutch has moved along the axle just a short distance. It is still driving the ring gear. All right, you see these uh, splines here. That's where the clutch is engaged to the ring gear. But now the clutch has moved uh, in far enough so that the uh, poles are released, no longer retracted, and they will engage the um, ring gear, and the driver will drive the ring gear, ring gear drives the hub shell at a one-to-one -one direct ratio, and that's our second gear. Shift into third gear. Now the clutch has fully advanced and coupled to the planet carrier, drives the planet carrier by means of these pins. All right, so now as the driver, the driver drives the clutch, okay, the clutch is driving the planet carrier. The planet carrier is driving the ring gear at an increased speed. The ring gear poles are driving the ball ring, which is driving the hub. So we now have an overdrive gear, which is our third gear. Okay, so now with the unit assembled, 
we'll go through the three gears and demonstrate what happens with the various internal parts as we do so. So we've got the shifter set in first gear, which means that the clutch is fully retracted. It means that the clutch is driving the ring gear, but the pawls on the ball ring are retracted. So there is no uh, drive action on the ball ring. The power flow is going from the driver to the ring gear. The ring gear is driving the planet carrier at a reduced speed. The planet carrier uh, pawls are driving the, uh, the hub shell. So we'll just show how this is going. As we make one full revolution of the driver, we see that the ring gear and the driver have turned one revolution each, but that the planet carrier has lagged behind and there is no power being transmitted to the ball ring. All right, so now we'll shift to second gear. So the clutch is still engaged to the, um, to the ring gear, but now the pawls have been released so that the pawls on the ring gear are driving the uh, ball ring. All right, so we still have the driver and the ring gear rotating at the same rate of speed, and it's driving the ball ring, so we have a direct speed. They see that the planet carrier is still falling behind, all right, because it still rotates at a slower rate than the ring gear, but now the hub shell is turning faster than the planet carrier, so it simply outruns these poles. All right, so now we shift to third gear. So now the clutch will settle on the planet carrier. Sometimes it has to jiggle a bit to, to settle in there. So now we watch as we rotate the driver. Now the planet carrier and the driver are rotating at the same speed. And the ring gear and the ball ring are gaining in speed. Okay, so they're being overdriven by the planet carrier. Once again, one revolution of input, one revolution on the planet uh, carrier. And the ring gear and the ball ring are gaining in speed. So we are overdriving the hub, and that's third gear. Now there is one flaw in this particular design. And the one thing that this hub is notorious for is what they call the in-between gear or the false neutral. And that happens between second and third gear. If the shifter is not set exactly right, what can happen between the point where the clutch leaves engagement with the ring gear and before it actually engages on the uh, planetary carrier pins, there's a very narrow window in there which uh, there's no drive taking place. So it can uh, quite feasibly happen that, uh, and it does happen sometimes, that you'll be pedaling along, shift a gear, and uh, you go to neutral. There's no engagement. The uh, new production Sturmy Archer 3 speed has addressed this. There has been a design change, mostly uh, around the driver, the new redesigned unit. Uh, the basics are the same, uh, the ratios are the same. The function is the same, but the driver system has been redesigned, and I will be exploring that in a future video and demonstrating that change.